Make sure to use our code FLIPSIDE to get a two-week subscription to the Key Collector app. Welcome to Tales from the Flipside. This is our Prospect 10 list where you get five additional books that are not included on the Key Collector app. So we'd like to thank the community. We had two submissions and they actually made our top 15 books. So we had two for two this week. Let's go ahead and get started with our number 15 book. For number 15, we have Silver Hawks number one. Yeah, I uh, I love this book. Um, if you're a fan of Thundercats, uh, Mask, back in the day, uh, you were born in the 80s, uh, you know about the Silverhawks. Uh, this one is not an easy book to find. It's it's getting harder and harder to find uh, in high grade as well. There's also a newsstand to this to be on the lookout for, but just an all around good book. And I think it may be the next 80s, uh, 90s property to pop off. Nostalgia always kills, so let's move on to number 14. At 14 is a community pick from Pavlovron, and this is Star Trek number one, the Gold Key Edition. Uh, Trey was telling me that uh, Star Trek is a sleeper comic. This is from the Silver Age and is undervalued. There are multiple new Star Trek franchises and seasons coming out. We have Picard season two, Discovery season number three, Strange New Worlds Season 1, and Lower Decks. So this is definitely a book to keep an eye out for. At number 13, we have Secret Wars number 2, the second print version edition. And welcome, Josh. Thank you. So uh, I put this on the list because I really feel that this is the direction that we're possibly going um, if we get Secret Wars. This is the first app of God Emperor Doom. Um, I did the second print version because it's only got 5,480 copies according to Comicron, and there's only three 9.8s. So, and there's a third printing of this, which is pretty much a ghost. I tried looking for it and it just doesn't pop up anywhere. But in my mind, this is some iteration that we're gonna get if we get Secret Wars. For our number 12 book, we have Wolverine, number 66. So the Logan movie came out, and then the heat died on this book, like it often does after media properties uh, are released. But after that, we've seen a lot more comic content from this universe, right? We've seen Old Man Hawkeye, Old Man Quill, and you know Marvel's going to keep going back to the well, at least in the comics universe. I think there's even a podcast on on one of these characters in the Old Man universe. It's the equivalent of What If or Elseworlds for the the 22nd uh, century. I, I think what will happen as the MCU actors age, right, we've got uh, folks like RDJ retiring, saying they're not going to play their character again. Well, what we've seen in every other media universe, maybe except for Back to the Future, is the char the actors eventually come back, the entertainment companies eventually come back. Um, so I can see them do it. This, this would be the perfect universe for them to bring back ScarJo and RDJ and everyone else who's left their characters uh, behind, eventually they'll, they'll come back to these characters and obviously the actors will have aged and this will be the perfect uh, universe to tell those stories in without having to do CGI to make the, the actors look younger. Uh, it's very speculative, of course, but um, I think it's a, it's a good long-term hold. At number 11, we have Captain Universe, the Hulk, number one. So I've been trying to deep dive, trying to figure out what Donny Cates could maybe do on his new Hulk series. Um, this is the first app of the Cosmic Hulk, and it just seems that literally everything he writes, somehow characters get, you know, cosmic powers. We've got Thor, Venom... Uh, Cosmic Ghost Rider, you know, he did Silver Surfer Black, so I'm just spitballing here and saying that this is possibly something that could pop up. And for our top 10 books, 
At number 10, we have Doctor Strange, number 48. So this was a submission by one of my teammates. In the guts is your, I guess you could say on the cover too, is is your um, first, uh, I guess it's battle of Doctor Strange and uh, Brother Voodoo. Um, on the census, we have, uh, I was just checking it out just to see if, you know, if any of these copies were graded. Very, very scarce census, uh, census CGC wise, 1598s, 696s, and 694s, few low grades, 30 total. Basically, a you can find this in dollar bins or back issue bins. Um, I know for a fact there are newsstand copies available i would probably seek those out as this book was it looks like it was uh published released and published in the early 90s you know it's part of a story arc that is very important to dr strange among other characters in this run so i like this book long term especially with the mcu more than likely going to be casting um brother voodoo in the future for our number nine book we have what if X-Men Age of Apocalypse number one. So uh, we have another community pick that made the top 10. Uh, this one is by CBSI's True First, Tolfer. And he says, this is the first appearance of Brother Voodoo, Sorcerer Supreme from Earth 93074. <laughs> Definitely a good book for all collectors of Doctor Strange and Jericho Drum. Um, I didn't know about this book, and uh, we really appreciate um, Topher's suggestion, and uh, keep an eye on this one. At number eight, we have What If Spider-Man Had Rescued uh, Gwen Stacy, number 24. So this is a pick from uh, Red Hood Comics, and this is Peter and Gwen get, get married, and at the end of this uh, ceremony, uh, J. Jonah Jameson burst into several police officers. Norman, uh, under the guise of the Green Goblin, had submitted his tape of Peter's identity to the Daily Bugle, and JJ meant to have him arrested. The police attempted to arrest Peter, but he escapes, and he's forced into hiding um, to protect the people that he loves. Sound familiar? So Joe was saying that this book is totally undervalued, uh, and he's starting to think that Feige might be pulling material from the What If books. At number seven, we have Superman Batman Annual Number Four. So, this compared to Batman Beyond Number One, this book seems highly undervalued. This is probably I know there's a lot of different ways to slice and dice, whether it's a first in canon, and and now that we have the omniverse, you know everything counts. So it's hard to uh, to pin down exactly what this is. So I will you know use my famous uh, expression and say this is an early appearance of Batman Beyond in DC continuity. How about that? But I think most people would agree that this is the second biggest Batman Beyond key besides his first appearance. And uh, like I said, if, if you look at it compared to what a Batman Beyond number one sells for, it, it it's the, a nine eight of this sells for about 300 to 350, which is a small percentage of what Batman Beyond once sells for. So what else ha uh, ha this book have going for it? It's an early art germ cover for DC. This is 2010. It's uh, and you've got Batman Beyond on the cover. I know there's some other books that where he's not on the cover. He's in in the guts. I think why this book is in a little bit of lull is because the Bat Be Batman Beyond live action movie hasn't been mentioned by anyone on YouTube in the past six months. <laughs> so it's in a little bit of a lull. Uh, now, what I will say is I've done a lot of research on Batman Beyond, especially on Batman Beyond number one. And the thing that I found while researching it is you can go back to internet news groups in 2000 and people going, there's a Batman Beyond live action movie coming out. And so th this is not a new you know, rumor. I mean, this has been consistent. People have thought there's a Batman Beyond live action movie coming out. 
one of these days it's got to happen. Otherwise, the rumor will continue to persist. Hopefully, it'll it'll level off at some point, and maybe uh, it won't catch up to Batman Beyond number one, but it, it'll be more of a more proportionate than it is now. There is also a second print to this, which of course is lower print. Keep an eye on this. It, it's in a lull, but I, I think it's only a matter of time before uh, it, it it goes on the roller coaster or hits a new floor in, in the not too distant future. At number six, we have World War Hulk number one, the one in twenty five. I was saying earlier uh, on a podcast, but I was saying how disappointed I was at the MCU's iteration of Professor Hulk in Endgame, and you know. I think a lot of other fans were. So in my my personal opinion and some opinions uh, upon my team, we believe that the Feige and the MCU are going to bring an iteration of the Hulk that is pretty much the opposite of what we saw, a very angry and vicious Hulk in which World War Hulk is just that. It's World Breaker Hulk. It's, you know, besides Immortal Hulk, is is probably the angriest, uh, most ravishing Hulk that was ever written upon all the Hulk storylines. Also, I believe in this book, you have uh, the date, the first appearance or debut of Iron Man's new Hulk buster armor. Cover A, you, there are newsstand editions available, um, but this one in 25 is very hard to come come by personally i i don't see it too often online or in the wild so i would definitely keep an eye out for it and you know on top of that i think it's 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 a wonderful cover i think it's great that the uh the the new hulk buster armor is is battling world breaker hulk and it has legs long term at our number five book we have star wars darth Maul number three so as a bit of a Spoiler, so I'll give you a few minutes to fast forward if you don't want to hear it. On the last episode of Bad Batch, we have Cad Bane making an appearance. So you might have seen Crisis for Darth Maul number two launch up in price. So for issue three, you actually have the first cover appearance of Cad Bane. I also want to mention that there is a second print of this book where the instead of the background being a yellow, it's actually all black. So make sure to check your back issue bins to see if you can find the first print or the second print. So this is definitely a book not to sleep on. Yeah, and also there's a uh, um, Tales from the Clone Wars, which is a uh, considered a first appearance. It's a thicker trade paperback uh, format uh, that has Cad Bane in that book years before this one. And also. Um, there's um, people. People been talking about Hondo uh, having a first appearance in this series. He is actually there in cameo, in a different uniform, different color color uh, swap. So, um, yeah, that's a great book, Aaron. I love it. At our number four book, we have all new Wolverine number one. Yeah, this is just a pick by me, just to uh, let people know that a book is on the dip and. Everyone is looking for all things Wolverine, also with X-23. And this is the first appearance of Laura Kinney as Wolverine. Um, I think just about like four or five weeks ago, this was like 50 bucks. And now it's back on the dip. And you can I've been seeing sales at $25. So uh, great cover. Definitely a great buy for anyone who's a fan of X-Men. Uh, good opportunity to buy low right here. I uh, think it's a great pick, Phil. And like Phil always tells me, buy the dip. Great time to pounce on this book. Also, keep your eyes out for the Lopez incentives. He did a a one in twenty five, and uh, which is a it's sick cover of a uh, Laura Kinney as Wolverine, basically just kind of like ah in the air. And then he also for all the design variant fans out there, he also did a one in twenty. Um, that is for some reason, very hard to find. And don't forget about the hip hop variant, you know, um, rest in peace, DMX, the iteration of the um, DMX, uh, flesh of my flesh, blood of my blood album. But yeah, um, 
I'm a huge Laura Kenny fan, X23 fan. Um, the X Men reboot, which most of my comic readers and comic fans know, mutant readers especially. The X Men reboot that was on FOC a week and a half ago, which drops, I think, July 7th. She is Wolverine. So um, I don't know. This is Marvel's way of maybe telling us, hey, uh, Laura Kenny is our Wolverine next gen character who could have legs. And what if she ends up being the Wolverine in this heavily rumored Disney Plus show? that uh, a lot of people are speculating on. So I think it's a great pick. And don't forget about issue two, which is the first appearance of her sister, Gabby, which she's named the Honey Badger. In that. And one other cover I want to mention is the, uh, for this issue is the local comic shop day, where it's a black and white sketch version of this that's limited yep. to 500. Yep, good pick, Aaron. And for number three book, we have He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, number 19. So here's a cool book. Uh, I think a lot of grown ass adults are going to be watching cartoons now after that uh, teaser for the uh, Masters of the Universe show on Netflix. So I wanted to give the community a book that is on the rise. These are selling for like five to ten dollars. Now it's up to fifteen. And this is like a Skeletor negative space cover. It's not just a cover play. There's stuff in the guts. And you see the origin of He-Man and Skeletor get retconned here. Um, it is revealed that Keldor is He-Man's uncle. And Keldor becomes Skeletor. So this is kind of a cool thing that uh, DC did here in this uh, 2015 book. Uh, there's only four on the CGC census. So uh, not a lot of people know about this one. For our number two book, we have Dr. Afro number one, the Black K action figure variant. <laughs> yeah, I um, I put this one on there because I think it has huge upside if you can find it. This is a it's a really tough book to find, especially uh, I'll say it again in high grade. Um, when Black K Cranston Croissant, however you want to say it, when he makes his appearance, and I say when on Disney Plus. I think this book will go through the roof. Uh, I think he will be a, a character that hits home for a lot of people. It's, it's going to be highly sought after, but that is if you can find it because it's not easy. Yeah. I'd like to also mention that uh, scar on black K's eye is done was shown in an, um, a star Wars book with Obi-Wan. So uh, definitely he could be out for revenge. Um, in the Obi-Wan series next year. And for our number one book this week, we have Thrawn number one, the one in 10 animation variant. Star Wars, th this is the time to buy Star Wars stuff. We, we know Thrawn is coming uh, to Disney Plus, And when he does, certain stuff of his is going to get out of reach. Uh, this is another one that there's not a ton of them out there uh, to, to grab up. And you are going to have to pay a little bit for it right now. Uh, but I think the upside on it is tremendous. Uh, again, you, we don't know how Th Thrawn is going to come across, uh, if he's going to hit with all audiences or not. But if he does, this could definitely be one to look out for. I want to thank everyone for viewing uh, our Prospect 10 list. If you'd like to make more submissions for the for, as a community pick, Please hit any of us on the panel for with your submissions and give us a, a brief explanation of why you think it would be a good fit, and we'll vote on them. Y'all have a great day. <laughs>